Hola, amigos, and bless you, fair citizens. Thank you for joining me today in this episode of a show that is untitled and will never be titled. It's just me chatting, just me blatting. And uh, here we go. See here on the screen an image from the latest uh, spectacular spectacle from those significant surveyors, not purveyors, surveyors of, of uh, culture that are Warner Brothers and DC Entertainment. <clears throat> this is, of course, the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover from all those DC shows that you stopped watching a few years ago when they got dumb. Now, I can honestly say I have not seen the entire thing of this Crisis on, crisis on Infinite Earths, but I have seen a few clips going around on the old YouTubes. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'll check out these cool clips. You know, they're showing various characters. I saw the Smallville one. I said, all right, not my style, but I like what they did. It was interesting. It was fun. Okay. I liked seeing Tom Welling play Clark Kent again. That's cool. And I saw some other clips. I saw Brandon Routh show up, even though he's the Adam on one of those shows. So it was kind of weird to see him play Superman and the Adam in the same scene. A little strange. But... It's okay. It's all right. However, something I did not like was this clip that we have portrayed here on the screen today, which is the debut of Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman for the last 30 years, Batman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, Justice League, the Arkham, Batman Arkham Games. Just so many wonderful memories of this magical voice this person who really became Batman himself, Kevin Conroy. Now, why do I have this on the screen? Well, you shall see. You shall see when I tell you about this scene. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. There are spoilers here abounding. As you can see in the picture provided, uh, here's Kevin Conroy standing next to, if you don't know, if you haven't seen the show, that's Batwoman. Uh, Batwoman. Uh, yeah, so Kevin Conroy playing an older Batman. Uh, he's got some Kingdom Come uh, references here with this thing that's helping him walk. The idea is that he's old and frail. He's not Batman much anymore because he can't really fight. He's broken down. He's, he's too weak. And so he's got to have this uh, mechanism to help him move around because he's just fought and so much and been broken and bruised so many times. And Supergirl and Batman, Batwoman go to meet Bruce Wayne and enlist him in the fight against the evil that is consuming the multiverse in this Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. And they meet this Bruce Wayne and he's definitely dark, darker than usual. It's terrible. Oh, it's so terrible. And then he tries to kill them or something crazy like that because he's evil. He's, he's been broken and bruised. And he, he hates the world. But here's the deal. Here's Kevin Conroy in his debut as a live-action version of a character he has tied he's been tied to and had been portraying for 30 years. Here's an actor's chance to get to portray something different. And they wasted it by making him evil for no reason. Really no reason. They wanted to lift up the Batwoman character and say, oh, you're the arbiter and the representative of, of what Bat, of the Bat family should be. Which, not my thing, but I, I get it. You're, you've got the show on television. You're not going to put a Batman show where it's strictly Batman on TV. I got it. So you want to prop up your Batwoman character because she actually has a show that isn't doing as well as they'd hoped. So what do you do? You put Batman on it and you waste the opportunity. You make him evil to prop her up. It's stupid. It really is. I, I don't like it. Because the same thing could have been done with him being still good. Him saying, I'm not capable of doing it anymore. You're the representative now. You have to do it. Instead of needing to be killed. And you kill him off. And then they basically bash him and say, You are the, the chosen one, Batwoman. Unnecessary. Dumb. I'm get, not getting mad at the fact that 
they're making a woman the hero. It is what it is. Obviously, like I explained, she's got a TV show currently on the air they're trying to promote. Crossovers are always about selling more things. They're always about selling more product. Why do you cross over with this comic? So somebody might go read that comic. Why do you cross over various television shows? Some Someone will go to that other television show. I get it. But I wish they hadn't done it. By doing, I think, a dirty deed to a longtime actor. And by doing it by sacrificing a character that didn't need to be sacrificed. Batman is the dark conscience of the DC universe. There's this split... Uh, there's this, this dichotomy, if you will, not a split. The dichotomy in the DC universe of two consciences. You have this dark conscience of Batman, right? He's got these morals of of uh, almost retribution and vengeance, but a moral code, a compass that he follows in order to fight what he sees as evil. And then you have Superman, who sort of represents the opposite side of this light. The uh, the bright, cheery, if you will, at least until lately, Brian Michael Bendis. The bright, cheerful side of the DC universe. And I think that that is necessary for the DC universe. So when you have Batman go all the way evil, I think it's a problem. I don't think it's the character they've built over all these years. And I'm not trying to limit any kind of storytelling. I'm saying you could have found a way to do this without sort of ruining the moment. Anyways, maybe I'm wrong. Tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, if I'm absolutely off, off base here and you totally like the scene, you're glad to see Kevin Conroy there. You don't think he was done dirty. Let me know why. Uh, share this video. Subscribe if you'd like like the video, all those things that will help me to take advantage of you, the consumer, uh, as everybody wants to do these days. So thank you so much for watching. Adios, amigos.